Hey you guys, this is Mr. Sal. This is just a quick lesson on division of polynomials, so thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Alright, uh, dividing polynomials, um, uh, some of you may be wondering why it's its own section. Because in a way we've been dividing polynomials already, uh, but more in terms of factors of one, right? Because if we can make it x plus 3 over x plus 3, it cancels out and it goes away and we get to forget about it. <clears throat> this is not going to happen like that anymore. So um, just in this section and then the next one, which is why I think they go better together. Now, dividing by monomials, which is just one term, is something we've already been doing as well. But it's good to review this kind of stuff, right? Um, down there at the bottom is kind of the abstract form of it. We can split this up into separate terms and then simplify them as we go, right? And yet, just like you see right here with this AB stuff, you may see or we may encounter some exponent rules, which we expect you guys to know, but if you don't, please ask, right? I mean, that. Pretty much that same stuff was on that last part, right? We just don't want the denominator to be equal to zero. Again, this is just pointing out that if we had, uh, so like an example, right? 3x plus 5, if it were over 6, okay, we could rewrite this as 3x over 6 plus 5 over 6, if it suits our purposes. Now this actually, right, we went this way, it also goes the other way as well. So if we want to make one giant fraction, which we've been doing with uh, polynomials, we can, as long as, again, it suits our purposes. Yeah, something like this. Okay, I've got, I see each of the terms in the numerator have x's, and not only that, but they're also multiples of 9. So I'm going to want to divide each of these individually by the denominator. So I'm going to split this up into three separate fractions. So this is my new equivalent expression. And, uh, well, 45, yeah, not everyone needs this step, right? But um, I'm going to show it just for this problem, okay? Just so we can see the simplification and, I don't know, hopefully it helps us remember what the heck is going on here. So I'm going to split up 45. I'm going to factor it as 9 times 5. And then I've got x times x. Well, I'll show all 5x's. What the heck. And then 63 is 9 times 7 with 4x's multiplied. 3, 4. And then 27 is 9 times 3 times x, times x, and I ran out of space, x, right there. Of course, this is all minus between these as fractions. And I'm going to expand 9x cubed for all three of those as well. Okay, and yeah, I've, I've deliberately lined those up on purpose, okay, so we can start canceling stuff out. My 9s cancel into 1s. Same with any groupings for x, right, these become factors of 1. Uh, which I don't really need. I don't really need to show those ones. So what am I left with? I've got this 5, and then I've got two of those x's, so x squared was minus, I still got that 7 with 1x, minus, well, that last term, I only see a 3. And this, uh, right from that last section, we kind of get used to solving for 0 in this case, but that's not really what we're looking for here. <clears throat> that's it. Okay, well, that's enough of that garbage. It's so easy, right? Now we're looking to divide actual polynomials. For the most part, as, and as if I remember seeing the homework right, we don't really divide by anything more than binomials in these, and nothing's going to cancel out, which is on purpose, okay? Now, if there's any empty degrees, let me, let me show you what I mean by that. So if I had x to the fourth plus x cubed, I'm sorry, x squared, then I would want to fill in 0x cubed on this and make that a positive x squared. 
it's important that we include these values when we are doing the division, okay? Otherwise, well, stuff gets pretty jacked up and you end up doing it wrong, which is what we don't want. Plus, it allows us, when we see uh, like terms with these missing degrees, uh, to combine with something, or at least visibly we can see something to combine with. The then, oh, the dividend, or the numerator, must be in descending order of degrees, which is actually pretty crucial. So if they gave us the numerator as uh, x plus x cubed, we would want to rewrite that as x cubed plus x. Okay, I mean that's a different example. Right? If the divisor, which is the denominator, is a binomial, ignore the second term until it's time to multiply. Um, that may sound really confusing right now. That's because we didn't really define what we're talking about. This is long division. So um, long division is a very popular way to divide outside of calculators. So, <coughs> Is it the only way? No. But for the most part, it is. Because uh, if we use the other method, which we're going to go over in 5.7, uh, we have to have a very specific format in order to be able to use the, the different type of division. Now again, instinctively, we may look at this and think to ourself, self, is there a way to factor this by grouping and then maybe cancel out the x plus 2? You could try it, but that's not really what we're trying to get at at this point, okay? because that's more like simplification, right? Plus, we just learned about long division, so we should probably use it. Now, well, dang it. In long division, right, you'd have something like uh, 3 divided by 5, which could be shown as a fraction, 3 divided by 5 like this. But in long division, it's uh, 3 divided by 5 right, right there. Okay. I'm only showing that as an old example of fractions and division because it's going to set up how we're going to do long division with this uh, polynomial stuff. And let's go ahead and rewrite this as long division then. So there's no missing degrees in this, which is nice to start out with. And this is being divided by x plus 2. Okay? Now that last point, uh, right, because we have our... Uh, oh, man. Our denominator is uh, already in descending order, which is good, because that's really w that we want it. And also the numerator as well. Okay, we kind of want both of them in that order. Otherwise, well, yeah, it, it can jack things up pretty bad. What was the descending order? Okay, now I get ignore that x plus 2 for now, just so I know what to, um, I guess, put, in, put up here, right there. Um, so I have x, and I, like if this was division, I would be asking myself how many times x goes into 6x cubed. cubed. How, how many of them go into it, right? Well, as it turns out, there would be 6 of them, and it would be x squared. x goes into 6x cubed 6x squared times, which sounds kind of funky, right? So, so I was just focused on the x and seeing how many times it goes into x, uh, 6x cubed. But now that I've done that, right, if we were to do long division, I would take 6x squared and multiply it by x and take it out of the terms that I was just using, right? So I got 6x squared times the x, which is 6x cubed, which is what I wanted it to be, because that's what I'm taking away from my original term there, right? But I've also, right, it's really 6x squared times x plus 2, so I've got to take 6x squared and multiply it by 2, which is 12x squared. And I don't really care if that matches. I just wanted to eliminate the 6x cubed. And I, the, since that's positive, I'm going to take it away. Uh, so what I end up with is this uh, 8x squared. And actually, I'm going to extend that a little bit because I need to drop my 24x and my 15 as well. Now, if it helps you, because uh, now I've got 
a trinomial, um, not a, well, just a regular polynomial. I mean, you know, just ignore this stuff. Okay, so ignore the original expression now because we have a new expression to work with. And that is 8x squared plus 24x plus 15. I've eliminated that, but I'll show it again later, okay? Just so we can see all the work on this. But in your mind, you've got to ignore that original stuff, otherwise you may get stuff mixed up, okay? So now, what I'm really looking at is x plus 2, and I can ignore the 2, right? Actually, let me get rid of these arrows, right? I don't really need those anymore. And I need to know how many x's go into 8x squared. That's very good, yeah. So there's 8, but also the x, right? So, um, yeah, it goes into a positive 8 times. And uh, now I'm going to multiply the 8x by x, which is 8x squared. And I do want to line these up so that they're with like terms. And, of course, that's what we're taking away now, right? And then I've got to multiply 8x by 2, which is 16x. And that's how many x's I'm going to take away from this uh, expression. Well, let's go and add those then. Uh, those zero out, which is what we wanted. I've got 24x's minus 16x's, which is 8x's. And I've just got the 15 to drop this time. Okay, so now I'm looking at this new expression, 8x plus 15. And once again, I can ignore that last expression that uh, we just barely used up. Okay. Okay, well now I've got that 8x plus 15. So how many x's go into 8x's? Eight. I got 8 of them. I should use a different color. Right? So again, I'm multiplying the 8 by x plus 2, which would give me 8x and then uh, 16 right there, but this is what I'm taking away, right? Mm -hmm. So those canceled out just like we wanted, and I'm left with <coughs> negative 1. Now, in normal long division, that would be considered the remainder, which it still is. There's just several different ways that we can write this, okay? Uh, that's a minus 1, so we could say minus 1, but it's still divided by x plus 2, <coughs> and that, that would be our answer for that, okay? Now, in the homework, I want to say that they want the uh, quotient and also the remainder. So if that were the case, the answer for your quotient would be 6x squared plus 8x plus 8. And then your remainder, which would go into a different box, would just be negative 1. But formally, this is how we would write the expression uh, completely with the remainder. All right, that last one was great. Um, <laughs> feedback indicates that most of you enjoyed it. Um, so this one, it it's it looks different, but the concept is still the same. I mean, here's the thing, right? We got that 4x, and really we're only looking at the leading term for the numerator, 32x cubed, and we know 40, uh, 4 goes into 32, so that's not a problem. So we can kind of assume that they'll make whatever's left from that go into 4 as well, kind of. So I, I would expect not to see any fraction values in this or decimal values. No funky business, right? Uh, but let's go ahead and write this as long division first. And this we're going to divide by 4x plus 8. So I'll keep everything in view this time so we can see all of it. Um, as we move through the problem, okay? But we got to remember that we're focusing on each, uh, whatever's left over, um, and those expressions instead of the original expression as we go. <coughs> so once again, I've got that plus 8, but, oh, and, and one other thing about that, too. The, nu the numerator has no values to fill in, right? No degrees to fill in. It's in descending order, and it's 3, 2, 1, 0, so we're in good shape there. Okay, but expect to see that here in a moment. All right, so ignore the plus 8. So I'm just looking at 4x. How many 4x's go into 32x cubed? Well, how many 4's go into 32? 8. And how many x's go into x cubed? x squared. x squared's of them do. Okay, so now again, when I multiply these, 
uh, it should take away that 32x cubed, right? So 8x squared times 4x, 32x cubed, and then 8x squared times 8 would be 64x squared. But that's what I'm taking away from that expression. So those zero out just like we wanted to right there, the 32x cubed. And I've got 92x squared minus 64x <coughs> squared, which, uh, hmm, 8... 9, 8, 28x squared. Thank you. But now I'm going to drop my 36x and my negative 41. All right, so now uh, this is my new expression, which I'm going to divide with the 4x plus 8. And how many 4x's go into 28x squared? We can start with just the numbers. How many 4's go into 28? Seven of them do. And that would be positive 7. And how many x's go into x squared? Just an x. So again, now that I've got that, I can multiply 7x by 4x and 8, which would give me 28x squared, which is, again, what we had planned. And then 7 times 8 is 56, and that would be x's, which we're taking away from that uh, expression. So that zeroes out again, which is what we wanted. 36x minus 56x is negative 20x. And then we're just going to drop that negative 41. So <clears throat> now I've got a 4x and a negative 20x now. So how many 4s go into negative 20? Negative yeah, negative 5 of them do. And how many x's go into x's? <coughs> eh, none. We're good. So negative 5 times 4x, that would be a negative 20 oh. x's. And negative 5 times 8 is negative 40. But that's what I'm taking away, so it's really subtract those negatives, which is the same as addition. So now that I uh, add these together, those cancel out. And I've got negative 41 plus 40, which is negative 1. And that, again, is my remainder right there. So we have the quotient 8x squared plus 7x minus 5 with the remainder of negative 1. So long division on this, how many x's go into x squared? Again, I'm not so worried about the plus 3, but yeah, just x. So x times x is x squared, x times 3 is 3x, this is what I'm taking away. So I end up with 2x, and I'm going to drop that plus 12 right there. Well, now, how many x's go into 2x? Two, two of them do. So 2 times x is 2x, 2 times 3 is 6. I'll take these out, and I have 6 there. So I've got x plus 2, and I've got a remainder of 6. So I've got my quotient, x plus 2, remainder of 6. Why is there a remainder of 6? <laughs> All right, so what do we do first on this one? Yeah, how many 2x squareds go on a 2x cubed? X of them do. Right, because the two, how many twos go into two? Oh, just, okay. well, you could say one if you wanted to. But I'm just going to say x, so now when I multiply this, x times 2x squared would be 2x cubed. And then x times 5. Uh, now this is kind of the tricky part in this is, we want, we want to make sure it's combining with like terms. So when I take x times 5, it's really in the x column right here, so it's really 5x with the 7x. See, because I, I can see 5 times the x is 5x, which I couldn't possibly combine with 4x squared because so it's x squared. squared. Yes, that is correct. Let's take these away first, right? So this zeroes out, which is what we wanted. So success. Uh, then I've got 7x minus 5x, which is 2x. But anything else will just drop, right? I had no x squareds to combine with this 4x squared. And I had no constants to combine with my negative 5. That's a positive 2x, by the way. And this is my new expression now. Well, now I've got that negative 4x squared. And I've got 2x squared. So how many times does 2x squared go into negative 4x squared? Yeah. Yep, that's what I'm looking at. Negative 2, right? So negative 2 times 2x squared is negative 4x squared. 
negative 2 times 5 is negative 10, which again I need to combine that with its like term, which is just a constant. Now this is what I'm taking away, so this is going to be addition, which does cancel out my negative 4x squared there. Um, I'm going to drop my 2x, and then I've got negative 5 plus 10, which is positive 5. Okay, now I do have x's right here. All right, now you may be wondering, right, how many 2x squareds go into 2x's. Uh, you just don't have enough x's right there. So that actually ends up being the remainder. This right here is our remainder. That's it? 2x plus 5, yep. And one, one way you could notice that is that once we got to just the minus 2, if we went any further than that, then we would be ending up dividing by x, which we don't want. Or do you? I don't know. Seems like more torture than any human needs in one day. All right. Now, uh, this one is a unique scenario because it is in descending order, our numerator, but it is missing that x to the 1th power term, which I will need to write but with a coefficient of 0. Very good. So if I had just written it out, this would what it would look like. But yeah, I've given myself some space so that I can put that 0x right there. Now, this is pretty crucial because then it gives us some kind of, I don't know, place to put like terms if we need to. <clears throat> so starting this out, how many x's go into x cubed? x squareds of them do. So x squared times x is x squared, a uh, cube rather, sorry. x squared times 4 is 4x four squared. And that's what we're getting rid of here. So I've got 5x uh, hmm, squared because our x cubes cancel. And then we'll just drop these other two terms here. All right. <clears throat> now how many x's go into 5x squared? Looks like 5x's of them do. That's positive. 5x times x would give us 5x squared. And this is where that 0x comes in pretty handy. 5x times 4 is 20x's, which we're taking away from that 0x. So those 0 out, which is what we wanted again. And I've got negative 20x, but I'm going to need to drop that negative 78 right there. So we use that 0x, and now we've got x. How many times does x go into negative 20x? Negative 20 times. Yeah, so negative 20 times x is negative 20x. And negative 20 times 4 is negative 80. Well, that's what we're taking away, so we're going to add those in. The x's cancel. Negative 78 plus 80 is 2, and that's going to be my remainder. So, I mean, you could write it like this. x squared plus 5x plus 20, and then just with a remainder of 2. That'll do it. That one.